this is the moment. The Bachelorette is back. Yeah! And the power. I'm gonna fall in love. Is in Jen's hands. And I'm gonna do it my way. ABC Mondays. Everything about her is great. I feel so special. Jen's looking like a queen. My men are very, very hot. Someone call 911. <laughs> you are looking so fire. This is the beginning of a new era. The Bachelorette. All new Mondays, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach Brittle. I'm here with Laura Heck. Um, I heard a TED Talk that I can't wait to tell you about on this episode. It's actually been kind of revolutionary for me in terms of the way I'm talking to my clients about, uh, in this case, sex, but also more. And uh, a paradigm shift or a perspective shift that I actually found has been really helpful for them to think about kind of approaching their relationship challenges in a new way. As always, we do a little bit of banter at the top, and at the end, we have a movie review, which we've never done before. Overall, I think you'll dig it. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. (laughs) Oh, God. Hold on while I screw this in. That's what she said. I know. Okay. I think I got it. That's one way to start start the podcast, huh? Okay. Okay. Feeling, I'm feeling really pulled together. Don't I look pretty today? Yeah, sure thing. Yep. yep. I put on all the makeup and I curled my hair. Mm-hmm. That's your um, cur- that's curled hair for you? Yeah, this is, they're called beach waves. They're like, oh, you know, it. that's yeah. the new way to do it. You don't want like the tight ringlets. You want okay. like natural and loose. I was ready to chop my hair off. I was ready for it. Yeah, I'm about to shave my head. No. Mm-mm, yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm, yeah. Mm-mm, I'm done nope, with this nope, nope. longness. I don't like it. Nope. Nope. You go short on the sides, long on top, it elongates your face. It makes you look lean and young. I don't know. It goes with your beard. I'm tired. <laughs> tired of having hair. I'm um, tired in general. Especially I, I in the winter. Up. I don't like it because I wear my beanies all the time and then my hair yeah. gets all like wonkified. That's fine. It's better to have your hair wonkified than no hair at all on you. Man, I knew you were going to say that. I almost didn't yep. even bring it up. Yep. I will be your hair advisor. Okay. Remember that one time when I had hair extensions and you used to tell me I, like, it was disgusting and It was dirty disgusting. It was it so was. gross. It was. <laughs> I, I agree with I you. I was like, what's I, going on here? What is happening with this? Because yeah. I, I, for some reason, I was sitting unusually close to you at like some dinner or something. And I was like, what? What is Why do you have rubber bands in your hair? Because I don't even know how, I don't even how know how works. extensions work until yeah. I saw you up close. Yeah. I went full. It's really interesting actually to look back at my time when I was in Utah, which we started the podcast when, when we were in Utah, but yeah. um, the women in Salt Lake are very well uh, groomed mm-hmm. and there's a lot of maintenance that goes in. And a lot mm-hmm. of it is like eyelashes, nails, and fake hair. Mm-hmm. And, and so I just went full Utah and the ha- the hair was great if I wore a hat, but once you take the hat off and I mm-hmm. have like fine hair, you can see where the extensions are at. And that's just, I went full Britney Spears. It did not look good. Yeah. Right on. Anyway. Um, what's new in your life? We haven't caught up because we have been like, grinding um do you is your wife back is everybody's your daughter back. back everybody's okay. back yeah you had an empty house for a while and you're like laura i'm gonna be super productive I'm i know get, get s done yeah and i did I, I had like 10 days in my house by myself uh i don't know dude now we're all back trying to figure it out i mean my daughter just turned 17 and i will reiterate that raising adult little adults is harder than raising little kids mm-hmm. um i definitely that's definitely challenging um, Rebecca and I are getting along really well. Hey, are you guys using that? This is uh, kind of an ad, but not really. Are you guys oh, the using, are you using it? Um, we did, we were using it and I am trying to dismantle my life from my phone a little mm. bit. Um, 
but I liked it because it gave me prompts to think about our relationship. Uh, just like, here's, here's something to consider. Here's yeah. something to think about. Yeah. So, you know, after using it for a little while, it gave me some prompts to just sort of initiate yeah. with my husband on my own. Yeah. We're into it. We we're liking it. Um, and then you know, the other day was uh, Halloween, October 31st. Mm-hmm. And there was a quiz at the end of the, at the, at the, on the 31st, that was like, how did you do this month? And it was sort of like a, like a recap of, we felt connected in this way. We, we had fun in this way, we, you know, and you mm-hmm. kind of ranked yourself and then it yeah. gave you like a, like a feedback report based on just this one little like six question quiz. But now I'm kind of excited because if they do that for me on the 30th of November and the 31st of December and the 31st of January, I can actually like, we'll be able to look and go, Oh, look at us. We're doing, yeah. we're tracking. And, and I've always yeah. wondered about something like that. So mm-hmm. I'm into it. We ran an ad for it last week and I'm still pro paired. If you're into that sort of thing, (laughs) I'm prepared. (laughs) Um, It does seem like something that, you know, if like you quantify or you gamify, like they're definitely tapping into that type of brain. I am not that person. I I don't care about numbers or going back and looking at stuff. Um, Man. Okay. This just brought up something that I wanted to talk to you about. If you're listening and you're interested in paired, here's the thing. You got to use the website. Because that's the only way we get credit. So it's paired.com slash MTR. So oh, if you're thinking about it. rather than doing on your phone. Yeah. Like just downloading otherwise the they're app. like, you guys are terrible at selling things. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not wrong about that. But <laughs> if you're going to download the app, <laughs> start with our little code thing. In fact, if you yeah. ever buy anything from Marriage Therapy Radio, do our little code thing. Because otherwise we're... And while I'm Dead on my water. soapbox. Okay. Go ahead and... Go over to Apple Podcasts give and leave us, us our five star review because it I know at least one of you. All Zach does is ask for money. <laughs> I know one of you uh, hasn't done it yet, and I'm talking to you, and you know exactly who I'm talking to. So go ahead and get that done. I want to say one. I want to say one more thing. Okay. When I just found the word uh, prepared, yeah, it reminded me of this podcast that I'm listening to called "Who Shot on the Floor at My Wedding." Oh yeah, yeah. You've told me about it. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But Have they discovered who shat? I think I'm in the finale right now. They're going to tell us. But the thing that's the hilarious about it is they keep calling the person the poopetrator. <laughs> it's not a perpetrator. It's the poopetrator. <laughs> so awesome. it makes me laugh every time. They're like, <clears throat> in this episode, we're going to reveal the poopetrator. And it's like they say it like totally deadpan. Yeah. Like it's like it's a word. Mm. Okay. You said it okay. made me think you wanted to ask me something. Yeah, no, I didn't want to. I just wanted to share. Or you something wanted to tell me something. Yeah, yeah. You were telling me that you were pretty pumped on paired, and I have been pumped. I went back, and I have been listening to uh, Brene Brown, and I don't listen to her podcast though I should. I think sometimes I just need to turn my brain off. Like uh-huh. it's too much in line with with like what I mm-hmm. do for a profession. Yep. yep. So sometimes like doing Brene on a walk is a little too much. But um, I have been listening to. Oh, what is it called? I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll give you a little link to it. But uh, one of the things that she was talking about was play in relationships. Uh-huh. And I really liked how she did this. Uh-huh. So she, I'm always looking for exercises. Uh-huh. And what she does is she has couples create a Venn diagram of play. And it's this idea of like, Zach, for you, and I'll ask you this, like, when, what is it that you do that you find really refreshing uh, you can dive into it and you lose track of time. I want to say it's writing, but um, nope. no, no, not at all. Not play writing, like just for funsies, not with like a not deadline really. or. No. Oh, interesting. I mean, I don't lose uh, track of time. I mean, I can do it, but I, I, I usually have to have like almost perfect conditions to be writing, which mm. is a little bit hard. That's why like when they're out of town, I'm like, okay, I can create yes. those conditions. But when they're not, I have to, I have to go out. And, you know, I used to, I did, I wrote both of my previous two books at a pub and Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm not doing that anymore. So it's like a totally right. different, totally different I thing. I mean, you could, I believe in your ability to go to a pub and, <laughs> oh, and not have a beer, but, absolutely. Uh, but that pub is now gone. You're like, your whole life has changed, shifted from the pub, to the pub writing. Yeah. Okay. So with play, the idea is what is it that you do that you find really, um, just like uplifting, energizing, you get lost in it, lost in time. Uh, And so I want you to just like name three, your top three things that you enjoy that are just like playful, fun for you. Yeah. Enjoyment. Um, Well, I I think one is Legos. Like 
I wow. Yeah. I didn't know that about you. Well, I mean, it's like an it's an for me, it's an easy way to do to f- accomplish something that doesn't require a lot of skill or attention and you can sort of see progress and it's happening right there. And I, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I made when the, when everybody was gone, I made, uh, I bought this little one that's like succulents. They're like little cactus plants. Oh, that's cool. And so now it's like the centerpiece on our kitchen table, which is. Will you take a picture and send it to me? Of, I course, see. I of course. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So Legos is one. Yep. And then I would say similar, like uh, I usually need to find some kind of hobby or something. So remember last year I did a bunch of cross stitch. Mm-hmm. So same kind of thing, right? Like I've got this pattern that I'm following. I'm just thinking about like, how do I get lost in time? If I've mm-hmm. got sort of, I can turn my brain off from actually having to think and just kind mm-hmm. of be told what to do. So with Legos, you're like, pick up this, these five pieces and put them together in yeah. this way. And the, yeah. you know, cross stitch is the same way. Like just kind of do this pattern. And I could do that for a very, very long time. What would be a third thing? Pro- probably reading. I'm I'm back in the practice of reading. It's more than writing for sure, but like mm-hmm. I'm back in the practice of reading for pleasure, which is which took my brain a little while because I'd been kind of corrupted by TikTok and Reels and you know social media, which <laughs> all the information is in little twenty second yeah bite offs. So yeah, you know, reading for pleasure probably would be on that list too. Cool. Are all you right. chasing something specific, or are you just like no? I was just really just curious. Yeah, but I did see that you have like a little bit of a trend and I wanted to ask you this idea of having somebody like in order for you to turn your brain off, you want to be told what to do and you just kind of follow the instructions, you don't Basically, have to think for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Is that similar to, do you find more joy and pleasure in doing a Peloton where you have your favorite trainer telling you what to do uh-huh. versus just going out for a ride? Yeah. Or, or going to the gym where I have to like, uh, like I, I really, I really prefer the Peloton, uh, especially to weightlifting. Like I was thinking about this because I just don't, I don't, I want there to be kind of like efficiency and immediate payoff. So like with the Peloton, I, I, the payoff is, it may not be that I am perfect shape, but I at least have sweat and I can very specifically sweat. And then I, you know, and I I will sweat if I'm lifting weights, but I just don't like it. It takes so much sort of patience and thoughtfulness and, you know, deliberation. I I, I might, I'm trying to learn how to introduce that into my life, but I, I'm not very good at it. That's interesting. I think we might be very, very different humans. Um, I think that we definitely are very, very different humans. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> it, well, just the way that you described how you experience joy and play is probably very different. Like I, number one, and this is something that I've come to, I always thought hikers were weird. Uh, and I still kind of think of hikers as being weird where like, you just want to go out and like walk, like that's your, <laughs> like your walk in nature really. Yeah. Um, and now I'm starting to get it. So my play is taking the dogs. The dogs have to be there. Uh, I can be with my boys or not, but I just enjoy going for like an hour and a half, two hour jaunt. And I don't have any direction in particular. Yeah. I might listen to something. I might turn it off and just let my brain go. Um, but it's, it, for me, it's not like the accomplishment, it's the journey. And I was thinking about that too. Like where else do I find enjoyment and play and get lost in time? And, um, it's always the journey for me. So Earth. I really enjoy a bike ride where I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter when I get there. Like, Oh, I did. Um, did I tell you about this where I did like this 30 mile run, uh, in just like one day Maybe. I got together Yeah. So, uh, Ellie, my girlfriend that you met, um, we got all of our girlfriends together and a husband, and we just decided we were going to run from one end of this trail to the other end of the trail. And we were just going to start. And whenever we got there, we would get there. And, uh, it was all forested. It was amazing. None of us have ever done any kind of marathon or ultra. And we just ran for like seven hours and from one end to the other. And for me, that was play. There Mm. wasn't like a, I didn't have to accomplish it in a certain amount of time. I was with people that I really enjoy. Um, and I just got to move my body. So I think for me, play is about uh, like deconstructing the, Uh. the end goal for me and Uh. just being in the moment. So with Brene's, uh, Venn diagram, what we would do is we would take a look at your experience of play, my experience of play, and see if there was any kind of an overlap where Uh, the two of us could enjoy play together. uh And I'm kind of wondering, like, what would that look like for us? You and me? Yeah. That's really hard. I don't really know. I mean, I think, um, 
Because when I'm at your house, for example, I think like, how do we want to kill time? You don't want to go to movies with me or watch TV. I don't really want to exercise with you. If I, if you get me out of the house, that's a thing. We've had success sitting down and playing cards. Like where we, Oh yeah. Where we just kind of say, Hey, this is a, that's another thing I do really like particularly a game that I know really well is to sit down and just go like, I can sit here and Mm -hmm. sort of mindlessly play this game while having a conversation with you. Um, and I don't really care how much time it is, but uh, you know, particularly a game that I know because I'm not trying to learn it or even win it. I'm just enjoying. Yeah. So I would say if I had to pick a thing that the two of us could do, uh, and it's not the Venn diagram. I didn't do this. I didn't get to there through the Venn diagram as much as just yeah. like, like, what do we do? Like we can play, can, we can play cards. I think we also could cook. I think we could get in the kitchen together. We've never cooked together, but mm-hmm. I think if there was uh, just the idea of, Let's just say like a Thanksgiving dinner, which Uh by the way is coming up. Uh Um, We could just say the end result is that we need to have a Thanksgiving dinner, however long it takes to get there or whatever we accomplish in the kitchen for me. I do not think we could cook. Yeah. Okay. Well, because here's the thing, you would feel strongly, you would feel more strongly about the end end product of the cooking than I would. And you would boss me around and be critical of all my choices. Yeah. And then I would put your pans in the dishwasher and it would just be the end of the friendship at that (laughs) point. Yeah. It is starting to cool off outside. It's actually getting harder and harder for me to motivate myself to go for these dog walks. However, I think I found the ticket. So rather than listening to my normal podcasts or to an audio book, I am tapping back into Dipsy. Dipsy is just for me. It is erotic short stories that are written for women by women. And it's just allowing me to kind of spice up my morning, my afternoon. Um, I know that my husband's really enjoying it because it's allowing me to just sort of explore my fantasies, relax and unwind. Um, And it's putting me into that erotic mindset so that I'm not surprised when he comes up from behind and wants to give me a back massage, wink, wink, nod, nod. Um, I would love for all of you to be able to spice up your dog walks or maybe your commutes or your drop offs by being able to tap into Dipsy as well. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash MTR. That's 30 days of full access for free. When you go to Dipsy, it's spelled D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash MTR. Dipsystories.com slash MTR. Hey friends, I have been so grateful for our podcast sponsor, Every Plate. If you're wondering like, hey, wait, Laura, how could you betray Green Chef like that? Well, here's some fun news. Our sponsor, Every Plate, has come together under one company with Green Chef and HelloFresh. The difference is that this is the budget-friendly version. Okay, so my day starts at 5.30 a.m. and it's a whirlwind of work, soccer, hockey, piano lessons, track workout, podcasting, and it doesn't come to rest until one very peaceful moment in the kitchen by 6 p.m. every night. I feel like the only time that I get to shut my brain off and just enjoy the process is when I'm pulling out my meal kit by every plate and all I have to do is just follow the recipe card. I don't have to think about what I'm making. It's just there and I get to serve my family a lovely curated meal for dinner. Check this out. We made the most delicious balsamic apple pork chops last night with roasted zucchini and rice. So if you've ever wondered how much time and money you can save with every plate, but you haven't pulled the trigger yet, here's the incentive. You can get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and enter the code 49MTR. Subscriptions must be active to qualify and redeem dollar stakes. The website again is everyplate.com slash podcast and the code is 49MTR. No, but it's actually quite close to what I was thinking about talking about anyway, Ooh. because um, I love it when that happens. I actually thought that you were going to tell me exactly what I'm about to tell you, but oh, because no. I listened to the, I found this TED talk the other day that I have been using quite a bit in my practice. And um, I'll just tell you, I wish, I wish I could credit properly and maybe I'll, I'll before I do the intro, I'll go back and find it. But um, this lady came on and she was a, she was a sex coach or a sex therapist of some sort. And she was a six minute talk and she was talking about um, what if we treated sex for for couples who are like, you know, for whom it doesn't come very easy, exactly like you would treat a new, a new hobby. 
So she said, for example, if the two of you decided to play tennis, if you decided that you wanted to get excited about tennis, this was, I mean, and Rebecca and I have gotten excited about tennis lately. So I immediately glommed onto the metaphor, but she said, here's what you would do. You would schedule time for tennis. You would probably watch some tennis on TV. You might buy some new equipment. You would maybe hire a tennis coach. You would, you would talk about tennis and not just while you were playing tennis, you would talk about tennis while you were playing tennis. You would talk about tennis while you weren't playing tennis. You would, um, you would agree when you went to go play tennis, what you were doing. Like you were, are we here to like win somebody mm -hmm. and the loser does the dishes? Or are we here to mm -hmm. just play tennis and enjoy some exercise and get some sweat on? And I, it kind of blew my sweat mind. On. I was like, this is actually a really good way to sort of demystify the work kind of like you were saying with Brene Brown, mm -hmm. she's talking about the work versus the play. Right. And I, this is a big energy and passion of mine. Like I just think work is so daunting anyway, that what if we did have a way to kind of go, Oh, we could turn this thing into an actual hobby mm -hmm. that we learn about mm -hmm. and we get good at. And, yeah. and I thought it was a brilliant metaphor for sex and I've used it, but I've also used it for just like basic connection or basic conversation. Yeah. Like what if it was just, you decided, oh, I'm not that good at talking or we're not that good at connecting. I'm like, yeah, why don't we just take it on like a hobby? So, um, oh, I have to, I have, I have a, I have a comment. Yeah, By anyway. the way, I, I was like, why does this sound familiar? Because I think when we did our intensive like uh -huh. last weekend or two weekends ago, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think that you brought this up cause I was like, I'm having flashbacks yeah. of you talking about this. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it was really funny because within a matter of three weeks, um, Zach and I had, uh, taught professionals how to do the seven principles for making marriage work. We taught couples over a weekend, how to go through the seven principles. And then Zach substituted <laughs> taught for my weekly series. We uh -huh. were just like, we getting lost. And did I mention this already? I was, or was it in therapy anyway? Um, uh, let me just say this really quick. Uh, oh. I just typed it in. The woman's okay. name is Ruth Ramsey, mm. Ruth Ramsey, R-A-M-S-A-Y. And the YouTube TED talk is called revamp your sex life in six minutes. And I was between clients. I was like, I had a 10 minute break. I was like, I'll watch this one. Mm, and I, awesome. I really dug it, but I've also just given you the entire te TED talk. So, um, <laughs> but it, you know, it's always really well polished and yeah. um, good if you can hear it from the source. But I was thinking about this where I, I have had conversations with couples where they say, here's what's really connecting for me. What's really connecting is when you are super um, empathetic to me. Like mm. I share with things with you that are important to me and you're super empathetic and, and it's like, okay, so that's their experience of joy and mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. And the other partner goes, you know what I really love? I love to play devil's advocate mm. and I really love to, you know, like think through the other side and they kind of have a little bit more of like a logist, a logical lawyer brain if you will. And they do not overlap at all uh, in their Venn diagram of mm -hmm. how to connect through communication. And I have that conversation a lot with them of like, we have to find a way for the two of you to at least establish very clear boundaries when the goal is we are going to play together around communication. And what that means is we have to find the overlap because mm -hmm. your experience of, I want to poke holes and I want to you know, like reason my way through this does not feel connecting to me. And mm -hmm. so we have to talk about where the overlap might be for the two of them, mm -hmm. if only for 20 minutes or 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just think again, for me, it, it was like, how do you, uh, like we talk a lot about removing resistance. Like how do you remove mm -hmm. resistance to the work? Yeah. And I think maybe it's just context. So I don't know. I've gotten excited about it. I, I wonder what else is true about, a hobby. Like I was thinking even the way you posed your question to me a little bit earlier, I was like, what's the thing that you can just get lost in and you kind yeah. of lose track of time, yeah. which I don't really think about with sex, uh, particularly in the era of having children, because I'm trying to figure out how to get it over with as like efficiently as possible. Not, not mm. all the time, but just like how do, well, we have, we got shit to do, right? Like there's not a, yeah. I There's used to get her? lost in it. Remember the, like where you used to get, I remember having like make out sessions oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. back in the day where, you know, like you're literally, you've rubbed a hole through your pants. Yeah. Uh, this is <laughs> probably too much or like your face is raw because yeah. you've been making out with a scruffy beard for the last three hours. I used to get lost in it, but now it's like, what's, what has changed? What's different? 
Well, that's a totally different section of questions, right? I think like the if we if we're talking about sex in particular, I think what's mm-hmm. different is that we lose track of what sex is for. Like those experiences that you're describing, um, at least for me, that whole rubbing your face raw or is it's sort of this like I was caught up in this activity that really was a little bit off limits. Like yeah. I was, you know, this we're not supposed to be doing this. This is right. you know, whatever. And it was new and it was exciting and it was about discovery and it was about novelty. And then, you know, it just sort of changes. And of course, you and I and maybe most of our listeners have gone through the phase where sex was for baby making. Right. And that became its own thing. And then and mm-hmm. then, you know, your body changes. And I had a woman say to me, Yesterday in my practice, she, she used the sentence, I was cleared for sex by my doctor. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that sounds terrible. And then she was like, so we had sex one time and we had a baby within like, I don't know, 12 months of the baby before, you know, wow. was the story she was telling. But, but, you know, if sex used to be this thing that was like kind of our little secret that we had and we yeah. had like loved it and it was amazing and nobody mm-hmm. else knew. And then all of a sudden you're being cleared for sex by your doctor. <laughs> it's a it's a different thing. So I think we need to go back to clarity about what is it for? And mm-hmm. um, that is a totally different thing. And if it's for, you know, learning a new hobby like tennis, that's a lot more intriguing to me, you know? And it kind of removes some of the stigma, even of watching a TED talk about sex or talking about mm-hmm. sex out of the bedroom or, because I, of course I would talk about tennis that way. And I, and we, we spent, you know, when Wimbledon comes on, we watched the whole thing you know <laughs> we're not going to sit yeah. down and like watch a porn marathon or something but like there's a <laughs> there's a there's a sense of like oh we're actually just sharing a thing that we like yeah and it's become a thing so so what's changed uh, i think it's i think what's changed is that we're we that it became it, the the thing that used to be play yeah became work right and now I'm like, how do we get it back to play? And again, if that's constructed, yeah, even if it's just conversation, the thing that used to be play became work. Yeah. And how do we get back to making it playful? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because if I, if I was like partnered with you and I know, okay, Zach enjoys turning his brain off and just sort of like following directions, mm-hmm. I might get a Kama Sutra and say, we're going to go <laughs> one through 50 and we're going to try every single position in here. And like, you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to be creative. You could just follow the rules. I think I mentioned that we got a book uh, that, that somebody gave it to us and you know, honestly, we just weren't ready. But I think it's a little bit different now. Like we got a book that was 365 positions. Awesome. And it was like, you turn to, you know, November 2nd. Oh, was a yeah. Little, little picture of like the people. And there was a, like a little <laughs> stick stick, stick drawing. Yeah, basically. It was like a little outline. <laughs> this leg up. And some, to, yeah, to twist, exactly. To and there was some, sometimes there was like a, like an exercise ball or sometimes there was a desk or a chair. Most of the time it pillow, was just a yeah. pillow or two people. But, you know, there's little space for notes and rank it one out of 10. And, you know, oh, we, we went through a phase one time where we were like, let's just try it. Let's just see if we can yeah. successfully execute this move. And, you know, my hamstrings are going to tear and I got like extra, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't look exactly like the, the, the Donna stick figure that they've drawn. And uh-huh. uh, so That's awesome. But yeah, can this I think stick that figure have more of a dad bod. Please? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so I can identify with it. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, it's interesting you mentioned like it was, it was off limits. Um, so much of my early days of self exploring or not just, yeah, just exploration w- was this like the, the, it was, it was naughty. It was off limits or yeah. it was like taking it to a limit and knowing where your limit was. So, uh, you know, I was chased for a very long time. Um, but that didn't mean that I didn't have a lot of heavy petting and like really vigorous making out what? sessions. C H A S T E. Yes. I thought you were C H A S E D. I was chased for a very long time. <laughs> No. By all no, of I these Neanderthal of, men with their yeah. bats who wanted to sex me up and drag sex me into me the That's cave. Right. No, but you were chased. Yeah. C-H-A-S-T. I was, I was chased and I was chasing. Uh, but it, there was, there was that element of, I can't take it past this limit. I cannot have intercourse. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of the time too, it was like, I can't actually like really touch your penis, but I will, I will do everything I can to mm-hmm. make it pleasurable for you mm-hmm. and, and for myself. But that was really fun. And that was really playful. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And, but what wasn't fun is I remember uh, experiences where it, it wasn't agreed upon. Like uh, the person that I was with had an assumption that the end result was that we were going to have sex. Uh, and I, that was, it was fun for me up until the point where there was a disagreement about what the end goal was. Uh-huh. Um, and then I was like, this isn't fun anymore. If you and I are not on the same page as to where the boundary is or what's off limits, uh-huh. then uh, this is, this is not fun for me. Yeah. Really? I mean, that, that's a larger conversation about consent yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but also just agreement, right? Like again, if you're going to the tennis court and one of you is just smashing every ball back and the other one is just trying to say like, what the heck? I thought we were just here for fun. Like it, totally. that, that, it, that isn't fun. You're not yeah. playing the same game. You're not you're enjoying yeah. the same thing. And that's where I think like the, the expansion of the metaphor into this whole idea of like, we're learning a hobby together. Like if mm-hmm. I went like, so I took, I took lessons this summer from this kid. I think I told you 17 year old kid, Sam, he was adorable. Um, but he, uh, you know, he was, he helped me a lot. I mean, I think it took three or maybe four lessons with him and my tennis game got a lot better. But what I did is I came home and I said, Reb, like, you'll never believe what Sam told me. Like, this is a thing that like, and so I was able to go away, have my own experience, come back and share mm-hmm. with her that became part of our ongoing development with regard to mm-hmm. this thing that we both like called tennis. Um, hmm. I tell this story lately. I don't know if I've told it to you or not, but as a soccer player, I I'm very, very confident on top of a soccer ball. Like I, I barely look at a soccer ball anymore when I'm playing or right. at least I used to. And so somehow I convinced myself, I learned from Sam that I don't have, I don't think I have to look at any ball. Mm. Like, I don't have to look at a tennis ball. Why would I look at a tennis ball? I don't look at a soccer ball. Well, it turns right. out, Sam was like, I noticed that you don't keep, you don't look at the tennis ball when you, sit. and I was like, what? He's like, yeah, he, he, why don't you try like watching the ball go all the way to your racket? I was like, what? This is amazing. Mind you know, blown. keep your eye on the ball. It's like the first thing I remember my dad telling me when I was a yeah. kid, but um, yeah. Man, wouldn't it be nice if you could have somebody that could just watch you have intercourse and be like, have you ever thought about maybe lifting her hips up and putting a pillow underneath her so that you change the entry position and the alignment? <clears throat> I think that would be really helpful. And there are people, by the way, that are, I know it will exists, do that. Yeah. 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 Especially in the Seattle area, you know, like um, surrogates or uh, there's a lot of different names for them, sex workers uh, that can ethically provide support for you and your partner where, it, you know, you establish the boundaries, but there are really educated folks out there that can support you and your partner or just you in getting better at sex and being yeah. pl- more playful. Anyway. Yeah. Even that, ideas. like, right. Like that is like, that's an interesting idea that my brain yeah. is immediately going, no way would I ever yeah. do that. And yet again, if I lean into the metaphor, sure. I would send people video of my tennis game and say, Hey, what do you, what do you see here? And interesting. Um, yeah. so I don't know. I don't, I, you know, again, there are things about it and sex maybe ought to remain sacred and private. I, I guess there's that piece of it too, but sure. But if it's, or, a, if it's an area of growth and there's a resistance to that growth, I'm pro thinking about like, what are different avenues to discovery? Um, mm-hmm. and again, I've used this in my office several times over the last couple of weeks and mostly end up talking about conversation and, and communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, what if you guys made this a hobby? What if you tried out some stuff? What if you did watch a couple of Ted talks? What if you did, you know, oh, yeah. actually sit down and practice some of these awkward skills around even just this one adorable couple, they came in and they were like, okay, we did the love maps. And I was like, great. She was like, so what now would we do? I was like, what do you mean you did the love map? She's like, well, we did the whole deck in one sitting. Yeah. It was, I was like not you did the entire them. deck in one yeah, city. They checked the box. I was like, no, what you want to do is like use it to help yeah, you yeah. have some conversation, not yeah. just check the box, you know. Mm-hmm. Although, I mean, if that's play for them, if they're like, if they both really to be enjoy, fair, they were in a car ride. They they had a very very uh-huh. long car ride, and so they did uh-huh. the whole thing, you know. So yeah, I I was also thinking fair. just with regard to um, you know the what what you were talking about if this was if sex was a hobby. Uh, and I was like getting ready for sex. I would have my uniform. So, you mm-hmm. know, I'm like, okay, how do I get ready yep. for my hobby? Make sure you put, put my on uniform a, a, on. Uh, activity appropriate outfit. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. I'm going to get myself like prepared. I'm going to be thinking about it. If something's a hobby and I know I'm going to do it, it also goes on my calendar. I'm scheduling yeah. it. I know, I know when it's happening. The lady in the TED uh, talk was British and she was like, 
Uh, so you would pull out your diary and you would write in your diary because the diary, the calendar is <laughs> yeah. a diary. Yeah, 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 exactly. What else would I do? I tend to, I mean, when I, when I got into triathlon, like I started subscribing to all the podcasts, uh-huh. listening to all of it. I was watching it on TV. I was, uh, I mean, it was just a little obsessive, but things like Dipsy, right? Like if I was, if sex By was By the hobby, way, if you're thinking also, about Dipsy, make sure you yeah. use our code. I don't remember what it is, but I'll tell you here in a second. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> but I would be listening to it. I might be, you know, reading some erotica. I might be observing some ethical porn. I might like, there's a lot of things I would do if sex became a hobby of mine. I might need sex to become a hobby of mine. I sure had a good time last night. Anyway, t- TMI, TMI. You trying to find the Dipsy code? Dipsy.com slash MTR. That was my, yeah. s- that was my way of uh, graciously it's ignoring your... Yeah. D-I-P-S-E-A dot com slash M-T-R. Yep. Which is pretty fun. Um, well, that's an interesting idea. I will watch the six minutes of that, that TED talk. And Why not? I will, yeah. I will make my something on a new hobby of mine. I will play so that it doesn't become work. Actually, that's, uh, this is not, by the way, a, a day where we just like integrate all of our uh, ads, but... <laughs> <laughs> For me being in the kitchen, it transformed. So I, it, it, it can be really hard uh, to enjoy cooking for your family. <laughs> but when I started doing the boxed meal kits, they come in. I yeah. feel like I'm learning something new. And I've never followed recipes. I just cook. I will open up the fridge and I'll look at something. And I'll go, I'm going to put these things together. And it usually turns out pretty good. But when I started using the meal kits, whether it be our sponsor who is our sponsor right now? We've got a couple. We ha- Well, we've had a bunch of meal kits and I actually dig trying yeah. them out. So there's Daily Harvest. So we did yeah. Daily Harvest for a minute. That's yeah. dailyharvest.com slash MTR. Right now, Factor is uh, like our favorite. That's not a meal kit though. That's like, uh, no, that's like. It's already prepared go, foods. Yeah. yeah. There's another one coming up here that I'm excited to try too. I think green. What was the well, green we've one? we've done green meals. Yeah. Let's see what that is. Green Chef. Green Chef. Is that what it's called? And we did, I've, I've done Blue Apron in the past. Like there's a lot of really great ones, but it transforms a job in the kitchen into something that feels playful and fun and learning something new and exploratory. And I, yeah. I dig it. Actually, those kits are kind of like Legos for me too. Like here, yeah. do this in this order and do right. that, you know, that. And so, but I am learning off. something new, but I have a really hard time learning something. I, yeah. That's mm-hmm. a whole different topic. So I feel like I, I know stuff, but I don't learn stuff. Did yeah. I tell you this? Like that's a, so anyway. Mm. Uh, I was watching a Vanity Fair. This is an, another, another side transition. Um, I watched this movie. It was with uh, Jennifer Lawrence and it no came out. No hard feelings. Where, yeah. Did you watch it? We watched it last night. I have thoughts about yeah. this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, gosh, maybe we should have talked about this on the podcast, but the whole premise of the movie is that this, this family hires Jennifer Lawrence, who's, you know, a seasoned 32 year old, uh, with like attachment issues. And, um, she, right. Would you not yeah. describe her? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So she's, uh, avoidantly attached to all of the other people, but she gets hired to woo this 21 or he's supposed to be 18 19. in the movie or 19. Yeah. He's going off to college and the parents are like, he's so awkward. Can you please just screw my son so Date that him, he yeah. will be more seasoned when yeah. he goes off to college? So this whole movie is this friendship that develops between the two of them where she's like overtly sexual, trying to woo him. He's like way more receptive, basically like, I, I just want to please you. If you want to yeah. have sex with me, I'll please you. Yeah. Very odd. But uh, I ended up, I was like, man, this kid kind of came out of nowhere. What's his deal? Super talented. And if you watch him communicate, by the way, as, as just a human being and not an actor, he is so smart and so talented, uh, quite musical, uh, musically inclined, but, um, they did a whole vanity fair thing where it was like, uh, love maps. They did uh, like a love maps of vanity fair. And I was, I was thinking we should do this, you and I, to see how well we know each other. If we can learn anything new about one another. Okay. But anyway, tell me what your thoughts were on this, on this movie. I, 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 I'm interested in it. I almost thought about talking about it today too. <clears throat> um, I thought it was, uh, yes, he's very talented. I think in fact that he got that gig, and dropped out of school to mm-hmm. do it. He was going to go to Harvard. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't really ever acted before. Like he just was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this movie now. And so he had to delay yeah. like his freshman year or something. Yeah. Um, 
I I don't know. I don't know if it's if, I, if my thoughts are coherent enough. I thought it was a fine movie that had some you know really interesting moments. I thought the pacing was kind of weird. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I found myself like not quite as invested as the movie wanted me to be in certain scenes mm-hmm. or moments. But I we laughed a lot. Rebecca and I enjoyed it. I think we would probably not watch it again. But um, what did you think of the uh, nude scene? I thought it was so weird. Like Jennifer Lawrence is such a big star. Yeah. I actually said this to my husband. I said, hey. Jennifer Lawrence did a nude scene, like full nude. Yeah. Um, and I, I said, you know, it didn't have the same impact that, uh, man, what was the movie? Chan went full nude in, um, oh, what's the movie where the guys go to Las Vegas and, and it's like a bachelor uh, party. Ha- the Hangover? The Hangover. There's a scene in The Hangover where, um, uh, what's his name, actor, he's a comedian, Chan, is fully... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, he's fully naked, right? Yeah, Ken Jeong. Oh, Ken okay. Jeong, J-E-O-N-G, yeah. Okay. Ken Jeong. Um, so not the same. Like yeah. it, there, it seemed like it was supposed to be comedic. She's definitely a comedic actress, but she's also beautiful. And I just was like, man, it didn't land the same way. Her yeah. nudity in the movie didn't land the same way. I understand what they were trying to do, but it didn't, it wasn't well executed. And I told my husband, I was really bummed out that she went nude for that. I read about it after. Cause I, at first I thought it was oh. fake. I was like, I don't think that's her body. Um, yeah. and I think, I think, I think it is her body, Yeah. but she, the end of the articles about it were like, she was all in. She thought it served the story and she was excited about it. Mm. And she like kind of went for it. I thought it was an awkward looking scene. Like I, th- yeah. I thought the scene itself, it looked like it was sort of deep faked or not quite real. Yeah. And so I don't know, it felt unnecessary, but, um, yeah, yeah, Just, it was a weird movie. It was a weird movie. Yeah, it was. We it laughed was a, a bit and the payoff was there and, um, but. Yeah. Anyway, that's so funny that we became film critics in the last like five minutes of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, if you remember, we actually did this for Vanity Fair where we were like, a bit of like the film yeah. experts. Yeah. Um, I went back and I was watching those, by the way. Yeah. They're super fun. If you haven't seen them, Google uh, Zach Brittle, Laura Heck, Vanity Fair, and you will see a series that we did in um, COVID. The end of COVID, yeah. The or end the, of COVID. Not the end of COVID, the end of my alcoholism. But um, Yeah. Oh, so. my gosh. I sent you a... Did I send you a screenshot or just a text no, message? No, I've seen them. Said, oh, I, I, oh, I've seen them. You I, guys... It's pretty incredible because we do we do some of these pre COVID like some of the videos pre COVID and yeah. then we do some videos in the middle of COVID and you can literally watch the weight gain settle in yeah, um, yeah. from one video to the next where our faces are bloated. It's not even bloated. weight gain. It's just well, I guess it is, but like for it's me, like it's just, I was just like blown. Like somebody put a pump in me and just started pumping yeah. me up, and that was just yeah, it was crazy. So yeah. Well, anyway, new life choices. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> Did that have any value for you? I don't know, but we caught up and we had fun. All right. See, we just lose, we lose all sense of, of time when oh, we're yes, together. So recording the podcast is my favorite hobby. Mine too. <laughs> Basically just playing with you with no actual direction in, in our sites. Okay. Well, let's land this plane okay. and, uh, and then we'll go ahead and record our next one right after this. <laughs> See ya. Great. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. We mentioned a couple of things. Number one, um, I did mention that I was listening to this talk with Brene Brown. So I just found it on Hoopla, which is through my public library, but it's called The Power of Vulnerability. I appreciate it. It's an audio it's not an audio book. It's a, it's like a live talk that she gave and it's two days worth of content. So it's almost like listening to an audio book, but it's more engaging. Highly recommend that. And then also Zach was talking about this Ted talk. Uh, it's called revamp your sex life in six minutes with Ruth Ramsey. Um, and that's a Ted talk that you can Google. It's literally six, six minutes and 37 seconds, uh, that you will appreciate. So thank you so much for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday.